On August 22nd each year, the Church celebrates the Feast of the Queenship of Mary. She is assumed body and soul into heavenly glory, and there the Blessed Trinity establishes her as Queen at the side of Jesus Christ the King. She has faithfully toiled with and for him on earth, and now she is privileged to reign with him in heaven. As our Queen, she has been endowed with immense power, influence and sway in the heavenly places. As our Mother, she uses that power and influence unceasingly on our behalf. She is our great intercessor, she is our Heavenly Mother, and she is our Queen. And Mary, our Queen, embellishes and enriches all she touches. So great is her sovereignty that a single sigh from the heart of our Blessed Lady on our behalf is worth more than all the prayers of the angels and saints combined. Now, this might sound exaggerated, but I assure you that the reality of her royal sovereignty and of her intercessory influence are far beyond what we can even imagine. And so in honour of her queenship, I would like to speak about that royal touch of Our Lady, which is so precious in the eyes of the Lord. Darth Vader's helmet, worn in Empire Strikes Back, fetched just shy of $900,000 at auction. The ruby slippers worn by Judy Garland in The Wizard of Oz reportedly sold for $6 million. And One Direction band member Niall Horan's half-eaten slice of toast reportedly was sold on eBay for $100,000. Why would anyone spend so much on things which are in themselves of little or limited value? Ordinary and mundane objects are often auctioned off for ridiculously large sums of money when it can be shown that they are in some way connected to a historical event or figure or linked in some way to one of the many varieties of celebrities which inhabit our world. If they owned it, used it, signed it, or even just touched it, then a bar of soap, a scrap of paper, even a piece of toast, suddenly becomes something of value far exceeding any expectations. Recently I pointed this out to someone who was lamenting that his prayer, specifically the daily rosary he prayed, was prayed too poorly, too inattentively, or with too many distractions to be of any great value. It's true that often, even with the best of intentions, we find ourselves coming to the end of our rosary and realizing that we have no idea how we got to the end of our beads, and feeling a little guilty that we have mechanically gone through the motions. The Rosary is such a beautiful and powerful prayer that it certainly deserves our fullest attention and that we try as best we can to enter into it while engaging all the faculties of our heart, mind and soul. Prayed in this way, each Hail Mary is like a precious pearl that we offer to our Blessed Lady. But at times, with our less than perfect hearts, what we place in her hands look more like specks of dust than fine pearls. This, however, is never the case. Each Hail Mary is a prayer composed by the Holy Spirit, for it's directly drawn from Scripture, and it honours and extols Mary, fulfilling what she herself proclaims in the Gospel of St. Luke, all generations will call me blessed. Our humble praying of the rosary, because it is addressed to honours and praises she who is our mother, our lady and our queen, actually does reach the ears of the Blessed Virgin. It is truly received by her 
and with, as with every honor she receives, she takes hold of it and then magnifies and glorifies the Lord God in it all. Yes, you may find at times your rosary is offered in a less than perfect way, perhaps more said than prayed. However, let that realization not cause you to become worried that it is therefore automatically displeasing to God. He and our Blessed Mother know well that we are weak, and Our Lady takes our poor offering and enriches it with her own touch, rendering what is small and what appears to be of no great worth into something of inestimable value. And the Lord is pleased with our efforts, even if we should fail to reach the level of deeper and higher prayer that was our intention and desire when we began to pray. Our Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother are better than any earthly parents. What parent would get annoyed or disappointed at a toddler's first few stumbling steps? When the toddler inevitably falls on his backside after those first two steps, is a mother likely to scold her son for his lack of being able to walk? Isn't a mother more likely to rejoice and praise those first steps and call the rest of the family into the living room saying, Come and see the progress of your little brother. Isn't it wonderful that he has taken those few steps? So many often remark to me, Father, I'm not great at praying. I get terribly distracted and I think my prayers are of little value. What's the point? Only the enemy of your soul wants you to think that. Because if he can get you to believe that, he has a chance of persuading you to give up your prayers altogether. And that would be a disaster. Strive to pray well and from the heart. But don't be afraid to give to Our Lady also your poor, distracted rosary. And watch how it becomes something priceless in her hands, something she can and will use to do great things for God's glory and for your good.